I wonder if you can uh, tell me your thoughts about your priorities then for, 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 you, for your party and for the other Green parties across Europe who also added to their performance this time around. What is your number one top of list thing to get done first? Well, it comes as no surprise that our number one priority is climate, it's climate emergency. We had the recent report from the Committee on Climate Change at the end of last year, which says we've got just 11 years to really turn this all around, to take the necessary action. Uh, so we'll be working really hard uh, within uh, the European Union with other green groups to make sure that people are put into the key positions to make the decisions uh, are reflecting that as a priority. But also um, making the links between climate and the wider economy. Uh, we put four proposals in our own manifesto um, to tackle uh, tax avoidance and evasion uh, with money uh, really moving across borders, uh, being very, very hard to track. And so we want to build on that. We've already been working on that, of course, over the last five years with our uh, Green Group in the, in the European Parliament up until now. Jonathan, does it, why would so many more people in Britain um, put leaving the EU as a higher priority than saving the earth? Does that concern you? <laughs> um, I, you know, the point that we've been making is that uh, the climate, of course, is bigger than Brexit. Uh, but I think it's, it's hard to deal with something that seems a bit far off uh, when people are living in such uh, huge inequality, poverty, you know, in, in the UK, We've got 1.6 million emergency food bank parcels given out by food banks every year by the Trussell Trust. That is staggering in the fifth or sixth richest economy in the world. Uh, when we feel that our public services are creaking, when our rail fares are so high, uh, where the cost of living is so high but wages are so low and you need uh, welfare to support you even when you're in work, um, people you know, obviously are trying to deal with those kind of issues and, and perhaps not looking so much at, at climate change. But what we're trying to do is say, look, these th issues are linked. Uh, we've seen huge growth, huge wealth created over the last 20 years in the UK at great cost to the environment. But for those who really needed that wealth to see the benefits of it haven't seen it. So we're saying tackle the climate, but also let's make sure that that wealth goes into the right hands to those who really do need it just to live. So, so, Jonathan, clearly you pick up votes from people who, who very much focus on climate and you've, you've set out nicely there some of your other policies as well. Uh, but the fact you also call for a second referendum on Brexit might have got you some votes. Do you think, though, that maybe if the Labour Party falls behind a second referendum, you might start to lose the support of those, uh, those voters? I don't think so, because the long term trend, and we saw this right across Europe uh, as this green wave kind of swept across the continent, that the support for the old parties is breaking down. And this is very much part of a long term trend that goes right back to the 1950s. 1950s in the UK, 90% of people voted for the two big parties. Now, according to recent opinion polls, it's even below 50%. Uh, and so people are wanting more choice, and it's reflected in wider culture. People want more choice in their political decisions, in their shops. Uh, and we will see, I think, uh, increasing fragmentation and political systems need to adapt and change. And this is part of the reason, I think, why we're seeing the big backlash against Europe and big political institutions. Those institutions that aren't able to respond, that aren't responsive to people's needs, to people's desire for choice, that aren't seen as listening to people, are really going to take a hammering, whether that's Westminster, the establishment there, uh, or it's Europe. Do you see anywhere in Europe, Jonathan, where the establishment parties are usurping green concerns? I mean, for example, here in Germany, um, whether you're in the CDU or the SPD, you have to voice concerns about climate change still in order to get votes. I, I take it that's not, that's not the way it is in the UK. We're getting there, increasingly getting there. It's um, suddenly things have changed dramatically in the UK and just in the last six months. Uh, of course, in Germany, yeah, you've got the Germans, uh, Greens on the rise up to second in the European elections, which is a phenomenal result. Uh, here in the UK, we have a phrase that where Greens lead, others follow. And we feel that we have always been on the right side of history. We were talking about the air pollution crisis and epidemic 10, 20 years ago before it was right at the top of the agenda. Of course, we've been talking about the climate crisis. We are seeing a, a massive paradigm shift in uh, the other big parties realizing that they have to come and get those votes back from us that we've taken. And so they are starting to make the right noises. They aren't so much walking the talk yet, but we're confident that they're going to get there.
One thing that you might have in common with the Brexit party, Jonathan, and I'm sure the list of things you have in common is quite small, but one thing you might have in common is an inability or difficulty in turning the level of success you've seen here in the European elections into seats in Westminster. The two are not easy, easy to translate because of very, very different voting systems. How do you get more seats in Westminster? Well, it is, is challenging, but that wider trend is for people really to vote with their hearts and vote for what they believe in in order to send a signal to Westminster. And in the European elections that just went by, we came first in places like Brighton and Sheffield Central and Norwich and Bristol. Uh, and so there is a real potential now to build on the, that vote in those places, knowing that people, uh, you know, a majority wants to see a Green uh, MP, presumably, or wants to vote for the Greens there. Um, it is very much also about building up your council base, your base of councillors. And we just had local elections three weeks ago here where we doubled the number of councillors that we had in one election. And that was a huge result. So once we get those things in place, um, we are really wanting to see more green MEPs uh, in Westminster. And I think we can do it.